Oh man, look at this, 120. We we're talking about volume again. This is awesome though. Okay, you need to memorize these, write these on some kind of four by six card or something like that because we'll use them again next year and the next year and the next year and the next year and the next two years after that and then the next three years. That's assuming you flunk out and you're still homeschooling by the, you know, you're still age 26. Anyway, okay, so let's write these down. These are formulas for volume. If you have a triangular pyramid, it's gonna be the same volume as a third of the right solid that it sits in. And I'll, you'll see pictures of these in a second, you'll understand. So just write that down. Second thing is, a rectangular pyramid is also gonna be one third. And a circular cone will be one third of the right solid that it's in. You'll see pictures of these in a second, don't worry. A sphere, however, is two thirds of the right solid that it sits in. In other words, if you, you know how to find the area of a of kin, tin can, right? Or the volume of a tin can, right? The area of the base times the height. If you were to find a, like a golf ball or, or excuse me, let's make, make it like a, I don't know, bowling ball that fit exactly into a big tin can and the edge exactly touched the top, it would be, the bowling ball would be two thirds of the can that it sat in. And we'll see pictures of this in a second. Okay, here's a problem, ready? Now pause this if you need to. In fact, go ahead and pause it now and read this and I'll come here in a second. Okay, the base of the triangular pyramid, four meters tall, is shown on the left. Okay, so in other words, this thing is four. Find the volume of the pyramid shown on the right. Okay, well, I, let's, the, the idea is that once you find the volume of this figure, then this thing right here, if you were to drop it in there, it would fit inside there where the top of this pyramid would be, the point would be touching right the very edge of the top. Okay, the point is to show you that once you find the volume of some hunk like that, you just go, if it's a pyramid or a cone that drops right in there, the, the fraction is one third and that's it. And when we get to spheres in a minute, it'll be two thirds. Now I'm gonna tell you something. This is like, almost like God's handiwork. This, this could have been some ridiculously complicated mess, but how nice and simple it is, right? If it's a cone or a pyramid, one third. If it's a sphere, two thirds, crazy. That's insane. Anyway, so let's find that volume of this whole hunk of junk. Well, we know what the formula is, right? The area of the base times the height. That's how we do it. We have a six by three triangle. The area of the base is gonna be, I mean, excuse me, the area of that triangle is gonna be six times three, 18, but divide by two, that's nine. Times the height is 36. In other words, this thing is three, 36 cubic meters. So in other words, 36 you know, cubes will fit into that thing, all right? Okay, well, uh, let's look at the pyramid. This pyramid drops perfectly inside that thing like that, you know, and fits perfectly in there with the, with the point touching the very top. Well, by definition, a pyramid or a cone is a third of that. So a third of 36 is 12 cubic meters. And there you go, that's all there is to it. Okay, let's try another one. Find the volume of a circular cone, four centimeters tall, let's just write it. The radius is 10, okay, well, I, you know, same old thing. If it's a cone or a pyramid thing or whatever, it's a third. So all we need to do is find the volume of this, you know, let's say it's a layer cake, and then we just multiply it by one third, or we divide by three, which is the same thing. So there you go. So let's find, we know the formula is the area of the base times the height, okay? So what is the area of a base if the radius is 10? Well, we know the formula for the area of a circle is pi, times the radius squared, right? Okay, so the radius is 10, so 10 squared is 100. So the area of the base is 100 pi. There we go, okay? The thing we multiply it by is the height, which is four. Four times 100 pi is 400 pi. Now they're gonna uh, let you get away with things like this, I'll show you in a second here, but um, the, the circular cone that fits into this thing you just divide by three, right? It's one third of that. Well, if you wanna go like this, you go, oh, times one third, that's okay. Or if you just wanna go like this, divide by three, that's okay as well. And the answer to this, by the way, pi is about the same thing as three. So I probably, you wanna go ahead and just go 400 times 3.14 and then take that and then divide by three and there's your answer. So that, that's what it would be. All right, let's try another one. The volume of this sphere, the radius is 10. Okay, well, basically, this, you just imagine this sphere as if it is sitting inside this big, oh, that is just horrible. Okay, it's inside this big tin can, just sitting there perfectly with the tin can 
you know, bottom perfectly fitting in. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to find the volume of the, you know, the, circ the circular cylinder is what that is. Remember those? And then we need to multiply by two thirds. That's it. So let's find the volume of this thing. Well, the area of the base, we know that the radius is 10, right? If we just kind of go up with it, this is going to be the circle. If you look down, it'll look like this with, you know, this as the base. So the area of the base is pi times that squared. That will be 100 pi. Okay. The height of this thing, they don't tell you. Well, they ain't going to tell you because if this is a radius and this is a sphere, no matter where you swing that radius, and if you swing it up here like this, it's still going to be 10. All right. So that part of the sphere is 10 centimeters high. And if you swing it down here, of course, it's another 10 centimeters high. Right. So that's going to be 20 total. So the area of a right circular cylinder, don't forget, is the area, excuse me, the volume. The volume of the right circular cylinder is the area of the base times the height. We've already figured out the area of the base times the height is times 20, right? 10 here, 10 there. The radius is swinging, all right? So 20 times 100 is 2,000. So that is the volume of this entire uh, right circular cylinder. We don't want that. We want the sphere, the ball that drops perfectly in there and touches the top exactly. So all we need to do is we need to just go times two thirds. So 2,000 times two is 4,000 pi. Don't forget that. And you divide by three because this is a one times a three. And then you could do the arithmetic and you know it'll be somewhere around a little more than a thousand because it'll be 4,000 times about three divided by three. So a little bit more than a thousand. So there we go. That's how we do it. All right. Lateral surface area is the second part. Lateral means side. So if we find surface areas of sides of figures, we're going to need formulas or we're going to need to do, do it logically. Okay, so let's look at this. Do, go ahead and write this down. All right, go ahead and stop for a second, pause it, and write this down. Okay, the lateral surface area of a right circular cone is pi times the radius times the slant height. And of course, L stands for slant height. Just like, you know, uh, you know, I, I don't know. S stands for lunatic or whatever. Okay. So that's the formula you can figure out. You can, can you visualize a cone? If it's a circular cone, of course you can figure out the area of the circle, the circular bottom, right? The base, that's just pi times the radius squared. But we don't have a formula for how to find the side of that cone, now we do. The formula is pi times the radius times the slant height. They will always give you the slant height enough to get this figured out. Okay, so let's look at one. Um, that's a slant height right here. This is the height. This is the slant height from here to here. That's an L. Remember, that stands for slant height. Okay, anyway. All right, here's the base of a pyramid. It's a square. This is the same thing we're looking at from different areas, all right? This is one of the faces. In other words, kind of one of the sides or whatever. The base of the pyramid is a square. It's four, each side's four meters long. The height of each triangular face is three. Find the surface area. Okay, well, obviously we have four faces to this triangle, I mean, excuse me, to this pyramid. Each one of these is going to be four by three, that's 12, right? But it's a, it's a triangle, so it's half that, right? So we have six for each of these. So we have six here, six there, six around the back, and six to the right, that's 24, okay? The other part we're gonna have is the actual base. Well, that'll be four by four, that's 16. So the entire surface area will be 40 at square meters. And there you go. Okay. Now the surface area of this hunk, right circular cone, the slant height is six and the radius is five. Well, let's figure this thing out. Okay. What's the surface area? Well, we know how to find the base, right? The ba we know how to find the area of a circle. It tells us it's a circular cone. So the area of the bottom is going to be five, uh, uh, excuse me, the area of the bottom will be pi times the radius squared. That's 25, right? So that's the bottom of the, cone, of the uh, circular cone. Now we need to find the area of all this part all around here. Okay, that's the lateral surface area. Well, they, we know the formula, right? Go back, what's the formula? It's pi times the radius times the slant height. So let's do that. So the, the lateral surface area is pi times the radius, which is five, times the slant height, which is six. So that's gonna be 30 pi. This part, in other words, all around here to the very back and all that will be 20, uh, 30 pi. The area of the base is 25 pi, so the whole thing will be 55 pi. And if you want to, in the back of your book, 
you know, if they're if they're they have actual numbers, of course you can use that or whatever. So I, I to me, if I were giving a quiz, I would just say the answer is 55 pi. If we really need to give it to the guy, let's say Home Depot or something, to buy enough paint to cover that thing or whatever, then you know we do it. So anyway, okay, go to page 381 and give those practice problems a whirl, and uh, go ahead and come back after you've done A. Okay, the volume of a pyramid, four meters tall, if the base is a square whose sides are six meters long. Ugh, okay. Well, the volume of a pyramid, four meters tall, if the base is a square, there's the base, let's make it a square, whose sides are six meters long, like that. And then in other words, how, how what's the volume of this thing? Right? And I'll try to draw this thing. Not a very good artist. Well, I guess that's not too bad. Anyway. Okay, so the the pyramid is four meters tall. So the thing is four meters tall. Okay. The base is a square. All right, well, let's find the actual volume of the thing if it were just a regular or just a rectangle. We would say the area of the base, which is gonna be 36, right? The area of the base times the height, which is four. That's going to be 144, and that'll be, um, you know, that's the area of the base times the height. That's, that's going to be the volume, 144 cubic meters. But it's not. It's just a pyramid that sits in that thing. So the pyramid is going to be one-third of that. Now, you could either divide it by three here and get 48 cubic meters, or you could look at this and go, I'm going to divide one of these by three. I'll divide that by three. 36 divided by three is 12. 12 times four, 48 cubic meters meters. There we go. Okay. But make sure you understand what's going on here. You know how to find the area, uh, excuse me, the volume of a right, like a, you know, like some kind of a um, rectangular solid, right? The area of the base times the height. All we're saying is that this is a pyramid that fits into that thing exactly, which means it's not going to be that whole thing because you're missing part of the volume in there where, the, where the, you can pour sand around the pyramid and it fills it up. So it's exactly one third. Could be a lot worse, but it's a nice, easy fraction. Okay, pause it and try this one. Okay, this is a right circular cone, so let's just draw it. You know, looks kind of like that or something maybe. I don't know, I'm not very good at these. Six meters tall, so that's the thing. And the radius of the base is two. Okay, all right. So the volume of this thing is going to be, again, one third, right? Any cone or pyramid or whatever will be one third. So let's find the area, excuse me, the volume. Uh, pretend you're dropping this, like it's an ice cream cone, you've dropped it into a can of soup or something, you've poured the soup out first. Um, and it's like, you know, a tuna surprise, so you don't want to eat it. Um, so anyway, it, it, we'll do one third of this, okay? So the volume of that can is gonna be the area of the base times the height. Well, the area of the base will be pi times the radius squared. Two squared is four, so the area is gonna be four pi. That's the area of the base. Times the height, times six, right? So the volume of this can will be 24 pi. But we're not looking at the volume of the can. We're looking at the volume of a cone down in the can. And it's exactly a third. Now you could either, right here, divide by three and get eight. Or you could go, I'm not gonna multiply this by six. I'm gonna multiply by a third of six, that's two. So four pi times two is eight pi. Boom, there you go, okay. All right, pause it and try the next one. Okay, find the volume of a sphere whose radius is six centimeters. I'll be honest with you, these are tough to do at first, but if you'll draw a little ball, a sphere, it'll help you. That will not help you. This will drive you insane. Okay, anyway, there's your radius. That is just awful. Okay, that is even awfuler if that's a word. Anyhow, imagine that that's a ball. Okay, I'm gonna try to like make it a ball, you know, whatever. Okay, that's supposed to be a ball. Looks like a diseased yak. Or something. Okay, anyway, that's gone. All right, here we go. All right, the volume of this ball, we know whatever we find, we're going to multiply it by two thirds, right? We're going to find the actual volume of this uh, can that the ball falls and drops perfectly into. In other words, here's the can that, it, that you, it falls into like that, and it drops perfectly into there like that. Okay, the radius is six, which tells us if we're looking down at this thing, it looks like this, right? Now I've drawn this to where the radius, don't forget the radius can swing anywhere up or down in any way. But if you're looking down at this thing, it looks like this. Well, we know that the area of that circle, we know to find the volume, 
we need the area of the base, which is that, times the height. Now, what's the height of this thing? If the 6 radius drops down here, it also goes up here too, which means the height's 12, right? Okay, so the area of the base is going to be pi times 6 squared, okay, and then times the height. That's the volume. Oop, by 12, that'll be 432 pi. And, of course, you don't want that. You want that. Right? So we're multiplying this by two-thirds. Now, again, this is a fraction. It doesn't matter which one you do first. You can multiply across and then divide by three, or you can you know, cancel this out or divide by three and then multiply by two. Who cares? It you know, doesn't matter. But if you were to do this and find this out, you would go, okay, that's 288 pi. And there we go. And probably you'd want to multiply by 3.14. You get somewhere around 900 is your answer. So, Okay, and again, that's volume. So that means there are 900 of these little cubic centimeters that will fit into this thing. Okay. All right. Pause it and try the next one. All right. This is find the surface area of a pyramid whose bases, bases, whose base is a five by five square. So in other words, you're looking at this. It's a five by five square, and this is the area of that. That's if you're looking down at it. Okay, the triangular faces each have a height of 10 feet, which means this is what each one of your faces look like. They look like this, and they have a height of 10 feet, right? Can you visualize that? Okay, all right. So, let's see, a pyramid and triangular faces each have a height, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so let's do it. We have, what is the area, you tell me, of that triangle? Five times 10, right? 50 divided by two, because it's a triangle. So it's going to be 25. So this is 25 as well. So we have 25, and then 25 on this side, and then 25 on the other side, and then 25 on this side here, that's four 25s, and then another 25, so the entire thing will be 125. There we go. So that's it. Okay. All right. See you guys next time. Have a good day.